Because so many times we think about just creating something, disrupting something for now. You need to think, how is this going to be an actual business? And that's what we're going to be talking about, creating a sustainable tech business. Now, what's sustainability? It's basically saying, as the moderator started, you started something that will live on. It will continue. So it's not about here and now. It has a footprint into the future. And then for you that you're running a business, because you need to think about that. Don't just think about creating an idea. You need to think about creating a business. What do you need to do? Now, first of all, when we say technology, we tend to think that it's a 21st century thing, right? That technology just started now. You'd think that beyond, I don't know, the 1990s, nothing existed. But do you know that if we look back, take a trip back into history, and look at where we're coming from, the first tech visionary, the first program was actually written when in 1800 by a lady called Ada Lovelace. As far back as then, people were writing programs. In the 1940s, you had someone who wrote a program for space. So you had what she was known then was more as a, like a human computer. In fact, there was a movie that was done about her, I think it was 19, no, 2017, Taraji P. Henson acted acted the lady's role, and uh, that's uh, Katherine Johnson. Then you have the first personal computer. Now, you can't see clearly in this picture, but the first PC was so huge that if you were to measure it, it would be between that corner and possibly where this banner is. Massive. And that was what a personal computer was way back when. And do you know the interesting thing? The amount of data that that personal computer had then is less than what you have on your phone now. So, again, there was someone else that helped put this in place, Ms. Wilkes. And why did she have to take this contraption home? So she should go write the, pro, the programming for it, the operating manual for it. So you're saying that, yes, technology is innovative, but you're building on things that have existed for a while. Coding didn't start in the 2000s. People have been coding for a long time. Now, this is from the 1940s. And then you had a group of ladies who were the team, who acted as a team of people who came together and they were manually coding this contraption. So coding has changed from what it was then to what you're seeing now. Are you seeing the trend? Are you seeing the journey that, yes, there are new things happening now, but everything you're doing now is building up on something that existed before? And then, what do most people do once you start up a business the speaker that came up earlier and talked about it, he said, go to rloop.com.com. Someone created that. And we have someone to thank for that. Domain name systems. So these things didn't pop out of the air. Some people put these things together. So because of this lady, you have the dot coms, dot orgs, dot what have you. So people have been thinking and building up on information for so many things. And their natural language, most times, when you want to search something, you say you're going to do what? Google it, right? And then when you want to search something, you'll say, okay, I want to know where TechPoint Inspired is holding. You're writing in what is called natural language. It hasn't always been like that. Before, everything was written in code, binary code. Someone put that together and said, you know what? You need to be able to speak and interact with a computing system. So this is just taking your trip down memory lane, just to give you a sense of that. Whatever it is you have now, someone has built up upon it. And so, as you're thinking about your business, you should be thinking, how is this laying the foundation for the future? And then beyond that, let's look at where we are today. Where are we now? Right now, are we in agreement that technology has changed so many things? It's changed the way you do business. It's changed everything around you. For example, something as simple as banking now. Most people say, I don't even want to go into a banking hall. Why? Because I can do it online. I download the app. I do my payments. I do everything I need to do from the comfort of my house. Maybe I'm lying down on my bed and I'm checking things. E-commerce, if I want to buy something, I, yes, I can choose to get up and go to a store or I can go online and pay for something. Technology has changed that. Education, everyone is checking out things online. You can have your studies online. Media, I mean, I need to say no more. If you want to check something out, you're going to YouTube. Everyone, you can put a video up on Instagram. You have Facebook. You can live stream. Technology has impacted every single thing. Healthcare, everything in the world. So this is good. This is all well and good. Now, we're knowing what technology can do. We're showing ourselves what technology can do. 
But as I said, it's one thing to have a disruptive idea. It's one thing to have a fantastic solution. However, it's another thing to actually run a successful business. And so what do you need to have? What do you need to know? What do you need to understand? So you can actually run a business that's going to stand the test of time. There are four key things you need to look at. Number one is, you need to, your business has to be digital. We've established that, that that's clear. Because if you set something up now and it's just brick and mortar, meaning it's just in the four walls of a building, your business is not going to grow. It's not going to have scale. It's going to be limited to where you physically are at that point in time. Everything has moved online. If you want to check something, you're going online. If you want to get a taxi, you're going online. If you want to make payments, you're going online. So it only makes sense that your business must also be digitally enabled. And a very key thing we need to think about now, as we're thinking about your business is, you need to understand the demographics of the market you're in. I know everybody's thinking about, if you talk to the average person, someone's running off to the US, or they're running to Canada, or they're running somewhere else. But do you realize that in Nigeria, you have a unique opportunity. Why? Because we just have the sheer numbers. Depending on who you ask, there's a whole, over 100 million of us. And if you add that, that's about a few African countries added together. So imagine if your solution is in the hand of just 10% of the Nigerian population, what does that mean for you? Then apart from that, the Nigerian population is actually very young. Because you can see the stats, between 15 and 64, that's a useful working age. So you have almost 80 million people who are available to buy your solution, pay for it on a sustainable basis. And then you have another 60 million people who are coming up, who are growing. That is a lot of people. Are you thinking about solutions for your children? Are you thinking about solutions for the mature? Where exactly are you going to play? You need to understand. So you can't just say, I have an idea, which is fantastic. Who is that idea for? Who are you pitching that idea to? What age range? And the beauty again of this is, if you understand Nigerian demographics, because we're so young, we're actually a very young country in terms of our population. If you look at Europe, 20% of Europe is above 65. Roughly the same in the States. So Nigeria is actually very young. So what that means for you is that if you get your solution in the hands of enough young people now, you will grow with them. Your business will grow with them if your business is still around. You need to understand market trends. Someone came into my office not too long ago and said, oh, they have a fantastic solution that's going to change the world. I said, what's it about? And he was basically pitched to me a solution that was for an electronic wallet. And I was like, are you kidding me? In 2018, you're still talking about electronic wallets. He didn't understand the market. It was a fantastic electronic wallet, but it's still an electronic wallet. And everybody has that. There's nothing unique about that. So you need to understand the market. You need to understand the trends. Even if I want to solve a problem, what problem am I solving? And is that problem still relevant? And has somebody else solved it already so I can figure out something else to solve? Understand the market you're dealing in. And then the boring part, but very important part, you need to understand how a business is run. So the exciting, sexy part is saying, oh, I have a fantastic solution. We've been working on this code for so long. We've done all these great and wonderful things, which is fine. But now, how do you translate that into a business? Because if you want it to grow, and if you're looking for investors, yes, some people may invest in an idea and help you build up that idea. But essentially, at the end of the day, they want it to be turned into a business. Why? Because then you can sell it off and make a lot more money, or you can run the business and make more money. So there's some boring parts that you need to think about in running a business. One is funding. You need to keep the lights on. You need to pay staff, you need to feed, you need to eat, you need to pay bills. How are you going to fund your business? Where's the money going to come from? Usually you start off with friends and family, but then at some point in time, are you going to go to an angel investor? Are you going to go to a bank? Are you going to, I don't know, what are you going to do? Then you have staffing. If your business is all about you, me, 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 mine, and myself. You're limited to yourself. So the day you can't work, nothing comes in. The day you're not feeling well, that's the end of the business. How do you build up on that? How do you increase? Are you going to partner with people? Are you going to hire people? And even then, how do you do that? And then there's the legal stuff, the really, really boring part. Are you setting up a business? Is it going to be a legal entity? Is it going to be me and mine? Is it going to be a partnership? Are you paying taxes? You know, all these really not very exciting things, but you sort of need to know them so you can run your business. 
there's the operating part, and then, of course, there's the marketing. There's no point having the best idea in the world, the best solution in the world that nobody knows anything about. So I see many times where people come in and they say, oh, I've got a fantastic idea. Fantastic, it's great. What are you doing to push the idea? I don't know, I just have an idea. It won't work. What is your plan to grow? What is your plan to market your business? You need to think about that. So why am I saying all this and why am I here? I represent a financial institution, First City Monument Bank, and why I'm here is that we've decided, we decided a few years ago that you need to work, we need to work with the tech space because we can see the impact technology has in Nigeria. We can see the impact technology has in the world. And so what we've decided is that let's sit down, let's partner with the tech businesses and help you focus on your business, right? So you focus on the important parts, which are the codes, the technical parts, and then we'll partner with you in actually running that business. Why are we doing this? So because it's going to give you the opportunity for your business to stand the test of time. We won't be part of success stories. So we won't be part of the next Facebook, the next whatever it is. The other gentleman here was talking about Elon Musk. Elon Musk didn't fall from the sky. He started somewhere. He, got, he had partners. People partnered with him. And now he's partnering with others. So paying it forward. What do you need to do? First of all, it's possible that right now you could be an Instagram champion, right? So you just have, my idea is myself, and maybe I'm selling online. So you have a personal account, but you're running as a business. So we have something for you. It's called the personal business account. And we understand that, yes, it's a little bit different from if Rolla is running her personal account on my own or if I'm running as a business. What are the things that I need? So we have that for you. When your business now grows a bit more and you're maturing a bit more, I now realize, okay, I've set up a legal entity which is separate from me, meaning I have set up an entity that's separate from, so it's not just Rolayo account, it's now Rolayo Limited or Rolayo Ventures. So what are the things you now need to do? Because now you're getting serious, getting ready to play with the big boys. Why do you need to have this in place? Because if you're going to be taken seriously and if you're going to attract funds and type of attention, they need to know that you are a business that they can be credible. People invest in businesses. So with this, we realize that, look, for the first few stages of your business, you know, it's tough. You're going to be paying a lot of money for different things. So we said, let's make life easy. For the first three months you're with us, we're not going to charge you anything. This is open, it's transparent. Why? So you can settle down and help you run your business, understand how your business should be run, and start putting things and structures in place. So we're not charging you for the cards, you know all these other things that people get charged for. We're saying you're having basically three months free banking. Okay? I thought someone would clap to that, but apparently not. And there's no hidden agenda because the next thing someone is going to ask me, like, why? And that's why I said it earlier. We want to partner with you to help your business grow. Because if you grow, we grow. It's a partnership. We're in this for the long haul. Well, thank you. <laughs> and then apart from that, we're also saying that, yes, you have an idea, but you need a website as well. When you have a website, perhaps you want to run a business that's going to have transactions on it as well. We're helping you with that. I'm going to give you a website that has payment capabilities. And in addition to that, you need to have some form of accounting platform. Why is this important? Because we've seen over time, because we work a lot with private equity firms, we work with angel investors, we work with venture capitalists, and they all say the same thing. When they want to invest in the business, the first thing they look at is the business's numbers, your projections, your cash flows. So if you don't have any, if you don't have any, then it, bits, it makes it a bit more difficult to attract that kind of funding. So we're saying, let's start the foundation right. Start your foundation right. Get an accounting system in place so you can start tracking. By the time you've started selling and buying and things are happening in your account, then you can start tracking and you can show people, this is what my business is about. These are the numbers that I'm running. This is how I'm doing. And then they can now decide, okay, I'm going to invest 10 times of what your cash flow is, 100 times of what your cash flow is, or whatever it is. But you need to have that cash flow and it needs to be clear to everyone. In addition to all this, because it sounds like I'm throwing, throwing so much at you, you're just like, you know what, I just have a business. I don't even know how I'm going to start doing this stuffing. I don't know who I'm going to talk to about taxes. I don't even have a lawyer. I don't have any of these things. So all this thing you're saying, what we agreed to do with our partners is this, also provide free advisory services for SME customers. Because you need advice. Because if you knew everything, you probably might not be here. You're running your business already. 
So everyone needs some level of advice, not just for where you are, to take your business to another level. It's very important because no matter how well, or how well established your business is, you can always do better, there is always more. So we're providing the free advisory services to you as well. And why are we doing this? Because we know that it's important. We want you to be able to focus on growing your business and then we take care of the technical bits for you at the background. So at the end of the session, if you can take a trip to the back, maybe, maybe during the break time, we actually have a center at the back here where we have people who are here to help you answer questions, any questions you may have. If you have any inquiries, make those inquiries, and we're here to answer your questions and actually start the conversation in how you can run your business. Because we keep talking about the future, as if the future is a far thing. The future you want to have, you need to start creating now. You need to do the work now so you can have that future, so your business is going to be sustainable, so that the next 5, 10, 15 years, we're talking about your business. One of doing someone else is standing here doing the slideshows and saying, oh, remember when this person put this in place? Your business could be the one we're using as an example. So thank you very much. Understand this. Your future is now. Thank you. For that, we'll go straight into the fireside chat. Um, looking at the audience we have here, how many percent of women can we say we have? I mean, if I just going by what I can see, it's, I'd say maybe 10 or 20 percent, if that. Oh, wow. Okay, that's quite interesting. Okay, so from what we're seeing here, what would you say, what would you say about the chances women have in technology, looking at even our turn up at tech events, looking at even the workplace? So what can you say about women participation? Okay, so... The reason I used the slides I did earlier on showing the women was very intentional because it tends to be a view that when you're talking technology, it's just about men and as though women don't play a role. And I just wanted to be clear that women have played a role and continue to do so. But it's about, you know, putting your hand up and saying, I want to be involved in this. They tend to think, people tend to think it's a boy's game. No, it's not. Do you know what you want to do? And you know the interesting thing? Maybe it's because we're saying it's technology. When we look at the stats, it's actually shown that as far as running businesses go, women are actually a whole lot more stable in running businesses long term. Women are a better credit risk than men, and this has been proven over time. So it's important that women understand that it's not a boys' club. It's open to everyone. And it has been open to everyone as far back as the 1800s, as I showed, the 1940s, the 1960s. It is so easy now for, for a woman to train herself, to be educated about what's going on in the marketplace. And I think we need to take advantage of that opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, I do like the fact that we're very particular about women and in your presentation. Now, I want to know, what is FCMB doing or what do they intend doing at really all these women who are really doing well in business, like getting very close to them and okay. just helping them, not waiting for them to come to you? How do you intend to chase after them? Okay, so interesting question that you asked. We, we've actually noticed that as a space as well. The same way we noticed the, the technology space, we've also looked at women in business space and we're actually setting up a team to be focusing on looking at women in business because women's businesses, okay, a business is a business, but women have peculiar challenges, why? Because more often than not, the woman is balancing a few other things that perhaps the man is not. And so understanding how to pitch the business, how to attract women to the business, and how we can provide the solutions that will, uh, will make sense for the woman-run business. So we're actually putting a team together to address that. And I think within the next month or so, we should have something for the market. Okay, so what would you say about managing the home front and technology? How do you do that? And what advice do you have for women as regards balancing the two? <laughs> okay, so as far as balancing and managing and juggling everything, there's a view that says, oh, you can have it all, right? And the truth is you can have it all, but you just need to choose what you want to have at that point in time. So... And this is actually, yes, there's a gender part because more often than not, women play a, um, 
shall I say, more active role on the home front, especially where there are children involved. So you need to decide what ball am I going to let drop at this point in time. So there are some times where, you know what, perhaps I have a deadline, I have something to meet. So that means that day, if I have children, perhaps I'm not focusing on homework that day. I need to get this deadline out of the way. And the other times, you know, you need to balance it out and say, you know what, I'm taking some time out. This afternoon, I'm closing early. I'm going to spend some time with the family. It's a balance. So you can't have it all. You just need to pick what it is you want to have at that point in time. And I think that speaks for women and also for men, because especially in an environment like Lagos, Thank Lagos you. is a crazy, hectic environment. So there are times when you just realize, I just need to press pause on certain things so I can breathe and live. Basically, you're saying that as individuals and women in particular, we should learn to prioritize, like setting like a priority list to say, oh, this is what is very important that I must do right away. Okay, that's quite interesting. And um, one more question I have for you is, the men who are here and the women who are here, what takeaway do you have for them? Like, in terms of sustainability, like, that will just make their business sustainable, everything about them, the court. Okay, the continents of sustainability in terms of a takeaway for them is just like a mantra, something they can just re-echo to themselves to say that I can do this, this is the way we let's keep pushing it. I would say look at your business, not now, but picture your business in 10 years' time. Do a presentation to yourself of your business in 10 years' time because that will now tell you what you need to start focusing on now. If you think about where you are now, you're thinking it could be so easy to be overwhelmed and think, okay, I need to find money, I need to find this, I need to find that. But if you're thinking, you know what, in 10 years' time, you've created a picture in your mind, this is what I want my business to look at, to look like. Do a presentation to yourself, write it down. My business has 25 staff, my business has 100 staff, we're in 24 countries in the world, you know, we're doing a profitability of X, Y, Z, we're impacting so many lives, we have solved all these problems. Write it down and go back and check on it on a regular basis. Have a vision, write your vision, go back to it, visit it every time. Whether you're encouraged or not, you need to have a long-term vision, you need to write it down. Thank you so very much. And I'll add something to that, have a vision board something you can look at, let it be Victoria, let it tell you a story every day, let it remind you of where you are going and where you are now. Thank you so very much.